in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us, the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we're continuing with Luis in the Kingdom of the Divine Will. This is part five. Uh, it gets better and better. There's two more parts after this. And um, Jesus just keeps on explaining to Luisa how magnificent this kingdom is and how this kingdom is going to be on earth as it is in heaven. This, this, uh, the new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem. And this is what we hope for. We And Christian hope is servitude. So in volume 24, 8, 23, 19, 28, Luisa said, I was thinking to myself, but it is, is it really true that the kingdom of the divine will of God shall come upon earth? So here, Luisa, this is our question. Jesus said to Luisa, you know, at the end of her life, she said, I'm sorry for all my questions. I'm sorry for all my doubts. And Jesus basically said to Luisa that you, you, you did not doubt. You did not worry. You did not, you weren't afraid. You were, it's what the, those who are going to read the writings, this is what they're thinking. So I'm going to give to you, Louisa, their thoughts. And so as you um, you begin to embrace what they're saying, uh, you'll present it to me and I will answer everybody's questions. So when Jesus says all your questions are answered in the book of heaven, it's really true. Uh, every question that we have about the divine will, about Louisa, about the kingdom uh, is brought to Louisa. Jesus allows this. The torture we put Louisa through with all our doubts, all our worries, all our fears, all our anxieties, all our complaints, all our negativities. It's what poor Louisa. She went through everything that we doubt and, and fear. And so Jesus is going to answer us. Do you really think it's true that the will of God shall come upon earth? And my lovable Jesus moving in my interior told me, Louisa, my daughter, how how uh, is this that you doubt? Why are you doubting? See, doubting puts a limit on God. When Jesus says, uh, uh, ask for anything to the Heavenly Father in, in my name, and it will be begun. Ask, believe that you have received it, and it's yours. The, the, the majority of people, because they don't see miracles happening, it's because they're not praying. I mean, a lot of people are praying, but... Some prayers, are, there's more prayer that's needed for something to happen, Jesus teaches Louisa. So in our life, as we enter into this gift of the divine will, as we begin to pray, little by little, he shows us there's, there's no need for doubt. There's no need for worry. There's no need for fear. There's no need for anxiety. There's no need for complaints. There's no, ne no need for negativity to the point of one day, no more sin. So here... She says, don't, he says to Louisa, don't you know that there are rights of God to give this kingdom? These are the rights of God to give this kingdom, the rights of humanity to receive it. So God wants to give this because this is what he did from the beginning. He breathed into Adam, this rule of God, this breath of God. And this is the right of God to do this. And now the right of humanity to receive it. Yes, I want this the fiat mihi is our let it be done to me as you say is how we have to act. So Jesus says, in fact, in creating Adam by giving his uh, God's God's divine will to Adam as the divine inheritance, God gave these rights that His divine will reign on earth as it reigns in heaven. So here, God wants this reflection of heaven on earth. He wants this 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 what's happening in heaven. To happen on earth. And he tells Louisa, you know, in, in the volumes, I want to see no difference between heaven and earth. And that's why I created it. I, I created earth for humanity um, so that so that it would be their heaven. It would be their paradise. So this is so true, Jesus says, that the life of the first man, Adam, began in the fiat. And having done his, his first acts in the fiat, he placed his pledges, his works, and in, in the divine inheritance. So this has already been accomplished by Adam. And even though Adam left the divine will, the, the rights of God and the rights of humanity are still in effect. That's why 4,000 years later, after prayer, 4,000 years of prayer, begging God for the Messiah, 
uh, Jesus came to earth. And now the last 2,000 years of learning how to um, receive this medicine from God, which are the sacraments and sacramentals, as we receive this medicine from God, we are slowly being healed to, to what? To come to a maturity, to embrace this gift again, this wanting, this gift of gifts, this prodigy of prodigies, this great gift of the divine will. So it's so much so, Jesus says, that these pledges and these acts that Adam did still exist in my most holy divine will. They're indelible, indelible, impossible to remove. These, these are permanent, indelible ink. These are permanent. And even though Adam went out from within this divine inheritance that God breathed into him, his acts, Adam's acts remained what he did in, in the divine will. And this constitutes a right for all of humanity, all of the children of Adam, but more so now because Jesus comes as the new Adam, Mary comes as the new Eve, the, the new and divine way of holiness is here because of Jesus and Mary. So, uh, so this constitutes um, the, a right of humanity, humanity to enter once again into this lost kingdom, this paradise. In fact, we, Triune God, do not look at mankind or humanity in himself, but we look at the whole human family as if it were one alone. If one leaves and detaches himself, humanity always remains and can receive that which was lost by Adam who left it. Therefore, there is are there are rights on both sides. If this were not so, the living of, of humanity in our kingdom would not have been a reality, but a way of speaking. But when we try on God give, we try on God give with facts so much that the human life has its origin in the kingdom of our divine will. So then he says to, to Luisa, and he says to us, if you only knew what it means to do even one act alone in the divine will, it, it, its value is incalculable. This, is, this new and divine way of holiness is, is so powerful. And, and Jesus is saying, I'm going to teach you, as I taught Luisa, how to do your acts and your rounds in the divine will. And, and we'll get into the rounds a little later. The rounds are, this is the way Jesus prayed. This is the way Mary prayed. This is the way Adam prayed before the fall, uh, recognizing in creation all the I love you's of the Father and breathing them in, if you want to say, uh, with, your, with your eyes, your, your ears, your, your nose, your mouth, your, your hands, grabbing all this and bringing it in to, to possess it and then to breathe back out to God what is God's in God's image and likeness. So he says, if you, if you only knew what it means to do one act alone, it is invaluable. And, and, it, and there are acts of my holy humanity, who, who, those of the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Queen of Heaven and Earth. What Jesus has done, what Mary has done, all that, that is done in the kingdom of our divine will, by, as their leaders, Jesus and Mary, of the human family, Jesus and Mary reconfirmed the rights for humanity to again re-enter into our kingdom. So I know there's a lot of doom and gloom out there of, of oh, this is going to happen and that's going to happen. What are we going to do? How are we going to do it? We got to go through this. We got to, Jesus says, it's like a birth. The, the pains are going to get more intense. The pains are going to get more frequent until the baby is born, until the kingdom is here. And we're in that stage. You have to remember, look at your family, look at your friends, look at your neighbors, look at your nation, look at the world, look at the church. Everybody's going through this purification. Jesus says this purification is necessary because the divine will is so beautiful that at this point, we're not ready to receive it. But we've we got to get ready. Why? Time has now come to an end. And, and we, we hear that from Our Lady of Revelation to Bruno in 1947. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of the era of the evil one. The 6,000 years of being under his thumb is coming to an end. The new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem is here. We, how do we know this? It's because of Louisa. Now, it's not fully here yet. It's, it's God is saying to us, I want you to have as much as you want. How much do you want? And it's, it's what, what we're doing right now by reading, studying, and putting this into practice is getting ready for this new and divine way of holiness. So he says, the truths manifested about my fiat are the new gospel of the kingdom of my divine will. Now, it's not anything new that goes against the teachings of the church or against 
the kingdom of redemption. That's all set. Everything Jesus told the apostles, nothing could be added to that. But the new gospel is about sanctification. The, the church, we see very clearly in, in, all, in all the saints, they give hints to sanctification. Uh, like you look at the, the lives of the saints, they pray, fasted, they did penance, they mortified themselves. They went to the desert, they gave up everything to do the will of God, the following the holy humanity of Jesus, the exterior life of Jesus. Now Jesus is saying, I want you to enter into the interior life, which goes beyond what the saints have given us. Now that might sound strange at first, because look at these beautiful saints, look at these wonderful saints. But when you begin to read the book of heaven, you begin to say to the Lord, you love humanity so much that you're now letting me share in the interior life of Jesus, the interior life of Mary, the new Adam and the new Eve. So we confirm the rights for humanity to again re-enter into our kingdom. So therefore the truths, Jesus said, that I've manifested to you, Louisa, the lessons that I've manifested to you, Louisa, the, the promises that I've manifested to you, Louisa, about the divine will are are the new gospel of the kingdom of my divine will. And see, this is by, this is what, what's said in Matthew 24, until the gospel of the kingdom is proclaimed. Jesus knew this was going to happen. He knew it was going to take 2,000 years. He, why? He knew there was going to be Louisa. He knew she was going to say yes. And it wasn't because of any manipulation. He said, I looked through all the universe, and I, I tried to find this tiniest the littlest soul next to the Blessed Mother. And I found you, Louisa. You're the firstborn. You're the newborn of this new divine way of holiness that's coming to all the earth. The re-entering of the, of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. He says this. In this gospel of the kingdom, in which they shall find the norms, the sun, the teachings of how to ennoble themselves, how to elevate themselves back to their origin, that's back to the garden back to live this abundant life. All the animals and vegetables in, the, in, the, in paradise are still there. We're going to go back to where we belong. As a matter of fact, that's what Our Lady said to Bruno in 1947. She said, my children are going to return to eternity where they belong and, and enjoy the beatific vision. That's why we're here. We've been, we, we've been created by God so that we can participate in him, enjoying the Lord for all eternity, being as John, as Thomas Aquinas says, in awe of God for all humanity, this awe of God, looking at him, being amazed, participating in, in this beautiful, uh, holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth. She so says, Jesus says, I want to give you back your origin. I want to take you to the state given to them by God from the beginning of creation. And then these souls shall find the gospel that proclaiming the kingdom, uh, proclaiming sanctification, proclaiming the fulfillment of the Our Father, proclaiming all of that Jesus gave to Louisa. It's, re remember, even John of the Cross said, God is going to do something even greater than what he showed John of the Cross. Uh, Thomas Aquinas said, the Summa, he never finished the Summa. Everything that I've written is mere straw compared to what's coming. Our, our, our lives should be focused on what's coming, not what we have to go through. This is what we have to go through. We've been, we've been created by God, uh, predestined by God to live at this time. Why? To give us the book of heaven to go through the most difficult times. You want to get through this? Start reading the book of heaven. It's, it's, it's a joy. It's a delight to hear what God is going to do. So Jesus says this. This gospel of the kingdom proclaims the kingdom of sanctification, proclaims the kingdom of the third fiat, proclaims the fulfillment of the Our Father, the one prayer that gave us, may your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven, and all that Jesus gave to Louisa. That taking them by the hand, this is what God's going to do, shall lead these souls to true happiness into constant peace. This is... There's no need for worry, fear. Jesus said to the apostles, are you worried? Just, does worry add one moment to your life? And then his command, stop worrying. You, when, you, when you feed worry, when you feed that demon of worry, it keeps you, it keeps, you can keep it alive in you. You've got to stop feeding it, starve it. No more, no more worry. 
No more fear, no more anxiety, no more complaints. And why? Because Jesus said to St. Faustina, the final devotion I give to my church before I return is divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I believe in you. Jesus, I have confidence in you. He says, Do, they will take us by the hand, these, these truths, these lessons, these, these promises of Jesus, and will lead you into true happiness, into constant peace. The only law, Jesus said, shall be my divine will, that with its brush of love dipped in the vivid, vivid colors of its divine light shall give back to humanity the divine likeness of his God. How can we become, Jesus, be perfected as your heavenly father is perfect. How do we do this? Jesus is saying, here is how. You had to learn the ABCs of the Catholic faith till to this point. Now he says, now I'm going to open the door for all who want to now enter into this life. That's why there will be one church, one flock, one shepherd. Everyone will be Catholic. There's only, there's only the universal life that God breathed into Adam, not many lives. It's the universal life, this Catholic life. That's why Jesus and Mary, when they come to earth, give back to humanity the Catholic life. And yes, it's been fractured. It's been uh, attacked inside and out. That's okay. That's what happened to Jesus. When he brought when he brought the kingdom of redemption now the kingdom of sanctification is close and he's asking us what do you want i got to give you what you want jesus says so he says my little daughter uh my jesus your little daughter uh, no, Luis is talking uh louise is now talking my jesus your little daughter does not have the heart to leave you alone that's why we go to adoration that's why we, we kneel in front of the Blessed Sacrament. That's why we look at Jesus in the monstrance. We, don't wanna, we do not want to leave him alone. I want to place myself near you. And if I can do nothing else, I shall whisper in your ear, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. See, that's, that's the most important thing to, that the Lord wants to hear. If you're going to adoration to read a saintly book, God bless you. That's saintly. It's good. That's holy. But Jesus teaches Louisa. And Louisa says to Jesus, I want to whisper into your ear, I love you, I love you, I love you. We're supposed to fall in love with our God. We see him in the monstrance. We see him in the Holy Eucharist. That's why we go to Holy Mass every day. To receive him, body, blood, soul, and divinity. To fall in love with our God. He says, Louisa, I give Holy Eucharist to my church. Why? He says, so that they can enter into the perennial communion of God in heaven. That's where we're going, never to be separated from God. But we're proving to him now that we don't want to leave him alone. For the sake of your loneliness, so for the sake of your prayers, for the sake of your tears, Jesus, give me the kingdom of your divine will. Here's a prayer of Louisa that we repeat, that we echo. Hurry, see how the world is falling. Your divine will shall place the world in safety. You must know, Jesus says, that in so much loneliness in which the humanity has left me, I never remain alone. I always had the company of the angels, and I always had the company of my mother, because though she was far away, my divine will brought me her heartbeat and all her acts as cortege around me uh, to keep me company. And also, from that time, it brought me the newborn, Louisa. See, even before we were born, we were with God. And, and that's what you're going to learn. You're, you're with God from the beginning until the end. And, and he, doesn't want, he doesn't want to abandon his children ever. And he says, Adam abandoned, but God is now bringing us back to where we were, where we belong. He says, and from that time, it brought me the newborn, Louisa of my fiat and all the retinue, that's us, of the children of my kingdom for my coming because all times belong to my divine will. And it has the virtue of reducing them to one single point so as to have them in all times in a continuous act without ever ceasing. Furthermore, as the soul remembers what I did and wants to be around me, the soul prepares the void within herself. This, this, is, the, this is the beauty this emptiness that we have. See, one of the reasons we sin is we're looking for, for God and we fall into the, all the wrong places, looking for love in all the wrong places. 
when we when we enter into this gift of the divine will, that emptiness is going to be filled with God, with what's God, peace, joy, and happiness. What's heaven, peace, joy, and happiness. And as you read, as you study, this peace, this joy, this happiness flows into you. This void within yourself in which to place the fruit of which I, Jesus, did and I, Jesus, suffered. So what, what the Lord has gone through, this is why our, our whole focus is the memory of Jesus and Mary. That's why we pray the Holy Rosary. To remember Jesus, what did he do? To remember Mary, what did she do? The new Adam and the new Eve, how did they live? I want to be part of this. This void, this emptiness of looking for love, if you want to say, is Jesus and Mary. And once you have this, your life is full. And, and it's so full that you really begin to live heaven on earth. Vine 24, 8, 30, 1928. My daughter, the kingdom of my divine will is all prepared within my holy humanity. And I am, he uses God's name, ready to put it out, to give it to back to humanity. Everything is ready. The 2,000 years of getting ready for this, this event has happened. And that's why John Paul II went all around the world for 27 years saying what? Get ready for the third millennium. Get ready for the glory of the church, the new springtime of mankind. This time that we're in is coming to an end. The new era of the new heavens, the new earth, the new Jerusalem is right around the corner. It's very close. You can almost taste it. It's so close. So Jesus says, he says, that everything's found in his holy humanity. And I'm ready now to give back to humanity the gift that Adam lost. It can be said that I, Jesus, formed the foundations. I, Jesus, raised the factories. I, Jesus, raised the rooms and the innumerable uh, and all adored and illuminated with not with human lights, but with divine suns, S-U-N-S, for as many truths that I, Jesus, have manifested to you, Louisa, about my divine fiat. That's why when you read the book of heaven, sacred scripture comes alive. When you read the book of heaven, the dogma and doctrine comes alive. When you read the book of heaven, all that the saints pointed to comes alive. You you. You've, you've, it's, it's this new and divine way of holiness that Jesus is teaching us little by little by little. It's not the, a, a great revelation. That's going to happen at the illumination of conscience. Uh, and uh, as you know, to get ready for the illumination of conscience is to read the book of heaven. Are you ready for it? Read, read. And I'll tell you, you're going to be peaceful, joyful, and happy. I, I can guarantee you that. He says, I am ready to put it out for humanity. He says, I've got everything ready. I've, it's all adorned with divine illumination, not with human lights, but with suns, S-U-N-S, for as many truths that I've manifested to Louisa about my divine will. Nothing else is needed, but for those souls who want to inhabit it, and there shall be a place and room for everyone, because it is vast, more than the whole world. You have to understand, you have to begin to see things from a divine perspective. Oh, there's not enough room on the planet. I mean, there's plenty of room on the planet. But Jesus has given, given us something more than the planet. With the kingdom of my divine will, everything shall be renewed in creation, and things shall return to their original state. And this is why many scourges are necessary. This, this purification needs to take place and shall take place. So that my divine justice, Jesus says, may place itself in balance with all of my divine attributes. It's going to be perfectly balanced, man and humanity, in such a way that by balancing itself, it may leave the kingdom of my divine will in its peace and happiness for humanity. So he says, so therefore, do not be surprised if such a great good that I am preparing and that I want to give is preceded by many scourges. That's what we're going through right now. Don't be surprised by this. We have to be purified. This is so beautiful, so holy, so perfect, that our Lord is asking us to um, get rid of all that is not of God. So, like one of the first things most people do is they get rid of their television. They No more hip. hip the hypnotic eye of death is there, that black box that St. Elizabeth Ann Seton talked about in every home. 
that black tabernacle. It's not to lead us anymore. We're not going to be worshiping that anymore. We're going to get into the true worship of Jesus. And, and to, to have this uh, Eucharistic revival that's happening, it's just the beginning. See, it's the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the Eucharistic reign of Jesus that's coming. We have to get ready for what God has planned. And he's given us the way and the how with the book of heaven. He says very clearly, um, it, it, it basically, my justice is going to bring balance. Um, it may place itself in peace with humanity, giving them no more bother. More so since the children of the kingdom of my divine will shall no longer offend God. And my divine justice shall change itself into love and mercy for all of humanity, for all those who want it. You have to remember what's coming. Our Lady said is going to be good for some, but bad for most. Why, why good and bad? It's depending on your disposition. Do you want God? Do you want heaven? See, most people are saying to God they want hell. And, you know, I, how many times have you heard that? I'd rather go to hell to be with my buddies. No, I want to go to heaven with, with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with Our Lady, Mother, and Queen, with all the angels and saints, where I'm supposed to be, where you're supposed to be. After this, Louisa said, I was following all the acts of Jesus had done in redemption. See, that, that's one of the things that we do in front of the Blessed Sacrament. We go through Jesus' life, and we thank him, and we praise him, and we adore him, and we love him. And my sweet Jesus added, my daughter, my language in redemption was very different from that which I had had for the kingdom of my divine will. In fact, in redemption, my language was to adapt to people who were incapable, to people who were weak, to people who were ill, to people who were deaf, to people who were mute and blind. And many were on the verge of, of death, eternal death. And so, therefore, in order to speak to them as the word of God, I made use of parables and similes of the low world that they themselves could touch with their own hands. And so I spoke to them now as a doctor, offering them the medicines to heal them. That's the sacraments and sacramentals. Now as a father who awaited their return, even if they were unruly children. Now as a shepherd who went in search of the lost sheep. Now as a judge who was unable to attract them by means of love and try to attract them at least by means of fear and threats and many other similes. This language of mine says that those to whom I was speaking did not know me, did not love me. And even less, they do my will. Uh, even less, they did my, my will. On the contrary, they were far away from me and that I, with my parables, made the searches and laid the net to catch them and give them each one a remedy to heal them. Uh, Luisa said to Jesus one time, my spiritual director stopped reading the writings and he died. She said, she said to Jesus, if he had, if he was still reading, would he be alive? And Jesus said, of course he would. The, the writings of Luisa are healing. It's physical, spiritual, mental, emotional, divine healing that's coming. This, this is what our God is asking. He's asking us to really begin to live this, this, uh, this new and divine way of holiness. He's asking us not just about not just about being good and holy and saintly that the saints have, but becoming that drop of water put in the chalice filled with wine when we share in the divinity of Christ, as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity. So he says, I, I he says. And I intensified the searches. I intensified the teachings to give light to those that were blind, the many that were blind, that they might get out of their obstinate blindness. We, we, we have been given the way and the how to turn back to God through the sacraments and sacramentals. And the obstinate blindness is, no, I don't need confession. No, I don't need to pray. No, I don't need to go to holiness. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to give you light so that you'll understand this is where I want you. Why? 
because I want to bring you into heaven. I want to bring you into sanctification. So he says, Louisa, now see how different my language is that I have had in manifesting the truths to you, Louisa, about my divine will that must serve the children of its kingdom. So the language that Jesus is speaking to Louisa is a, 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 a different, deeper language than he spoke to the, to the, to the uh, apostles. This is why this is the new gospel. And he calls it the testament of love. He calls it the testament of the kingdom. And Jesus, and you think about it, John Paul II gave us uh, the third um, illumination, uh, the third mystery uh, of the kingdom of God being proclaimed on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. That's where we are. He says, my language on the fiat has been like, like a father in the midst of his dear and loving children that are all healthy. And since each of them possesses my very life within them, by virtue of my divine will, they shall be capable of understanding my highest lessons. This is the lessons of heaven. This is the lessons of heaven that our lady gives and our Lord gives. This is why I have moved beyond placing before them the beautiful similes of the sun. This is what's happening. Of the spheres, of the heavens, of my very divine way of operating that extends up to the infinite. Because having my divine fiat in them, this is what happens when we're baptized. We're baptized in God's image and likeness. This is what's happening in God's image and likeness. So through the image, we, we receive a baptism. The likeness is when we read the book of heaven. So he says, it's they're capable of understanding now the highest lessons that I am going to give to my church, my, my children. This is why I have moved beyond. I'm going to sneeze. I'm sorry. Oh, this is why I'm going to move beyond. Sorry. Placing before them the beautiful similes of the sun, beautiful similes of the spheres of the heaven, beautifully beautiful similes of the divine way of operating. That extends up to the infinite because having my divine fiat in them through holy baptism, they shall have within them the one who created the heavens, the one who created the spheres, the one who created the sun, the one who give who will give them the virtue of copying within themselves everything that God has created and his very ways that he he that he has in his divine operating. So here. It's we're not ignorant of of Jesus. We're not ignorant of the blessed mother of the new Adam and of the new Eve. It's 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 we, we want to begin to live this new and divine way of holiness. So Jesus says very, very clearly in volume 24, 9, 8, 1928. I was thinking to myself, how many sacrifices are needed for this kingdom of the fiat? We see. Sacrifices of writing, our sacrifices of reading. There's a many, of many books out there. But Jesus says the only book that will transform a soul is the book of heaven. And those who are reading are experiencing this. They're, you're, you're really experiencing, wow, if only St. Francis knew this. If only St. Thomas Aquinas knew this. So St. Thomas Aquinas, I think, got a glimpse when he finally said, everything I've written is mere straw compared to what God is going to present. And this is what he's presenting in the book of heaven. How many sacrifices are needy, needed for this kingdom of the fiat? Sacrifices of Louisa writing, sacrifices of us reading, sacrifice of rest and of sleep, sacrifice of sufferings and incessant prayer, continuous death to the human will. Then what does that mean? No, see, we got to go through the martyrdom of martyrdoms. No more worry. Oh, but Father, you don't understand. You don't understand what my family's going through. No more worry. Jesus, I trust in you. Pray. Pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet every day at 3 o'clock. Jesus, I trust in you. Yes, there's difficulty, but you're my Lord, my Savior, my Master, my King, my God, and I trust that you're going to take care of this. I present it to you, and I leave it in your hands. You are my God. Mary is my mother and queen. I trust that you're going to take care of this. No more worry. No more fear. Oh, it's going to be terrible outside. No, Jesus is, uh, is Lord. Jesus is my King. I was talking to somebody last night. We were talking about how it's going to get tough out there. It's going to get tough out there. I said it's going to be so tough. It's going to be like on a plane when you go through 
I remember going through a, a, a flying to, to Europe, we're right over the middle of the Atlantic, and the, the plane starts bouncing. I mean, it's the turbulence was so traumatic. I mean, you could see the wings flapping up and down. You know, I remember looking out the window going, I don't think wings are supposed to do that. Thank God they do. But I, and, and the, the person I was talking to, they said, did you pray? I said, did I pray? <laughs> yes. And we're going to pray more. It's going to get turbulent. It's going to get scary. You have to understand. But Jesus is going to take care of us. It's, it's like being in the boat with Noah. They were tossed in the waves. They were tossed in the waves. I always thought, like, who cleaned all the, the, the poop? That, that, that must have been a, a heck of a job. But they, they were tossed in the way for 40 days and for 40 nights, not just for like 15 minutes in the air. But really, I mean, this, you have to understand, there's going to be tough rings. There's going to be incessant prayers. There's going to be this continuous death to worry, continuous death to fear. You're not going to feed it anymore. You're going to say, no, I trust in Jesus. I trust and believe in him. I have hope and confidence in him. My hope is certitude. Continuous death of the human will, so that the divine will may have its perennial life of peace, joy, and happiness. I know you're my God, you're my Savior, you're my King, you're my Master. You're going to take care of it. I trust you. Many other things that only Jesus knows. And after all this, maybe nothing good can be seen. No glory to God. Therefore, so many sacrifices without utility, without effects, have happened. But while I was thinking of this, Louisa said, my always love with Jesus came out from within my interior. That's where Jesus dwells. He wants us to know this. And clasped me in his arms. He told me, my daughter, what are you saying? There is not one sacrifice that you have made that shall not have its value and its precious effects. Because everything that is done in my divine will to imp will, will impetrate that it, the divine will be known, the divine will be acquired, of this divine life and its communicative virtues will be given as its nature to humanity in such a way as to communicate to other souls this divine life and the virtue to possess it. Louisa, she didn't eat, drink, or sleep for, for 70 years. He says, Louisa, what do you say? There's not one sacrifice that you have made that won't have its value, won't have its effect. Everything done in my divine will will make the divine will known, loved, and possessed in such a way as to communicate to others this divine life, the virtue of possessing it. So much so, Louisa, that everything you have done and suffered is present at this moment before God as an imperative act to obtain that humanity dispose themselves and that God conceive a great good, a good that is so great. We're, we're going to be disposed we're going to be disposed to what God is going to do. God, Jesus says, what you have gone through, Louisa, the sufferings, the torture, the crucifixions that you've gone through is going to help us be disposed to say yes, to, to concede this great good that God wants to give to us. Yes, I want this. And then she says, then when my divine will becomes known and is it is written, Okay, and, <laughs> and its kingdom is accomplished. All the words that you have written, Louisa, all the words that we have read, the night vigils, your incessant prayers, your rounds upon rounds and the work of creation and redemption. This is where we're going to learn how to pray the rounds. God is going to teach us how to pray the rounds, the way Jesus did, the way Mary did, the way Adam did before the fall. Your long years of bed, your pains, your sufferings, your sacrifices, that you and I have gone through minimal, minimal sufferings. Worry, the, the, the worry, the fear, the anxiety, the complaints, the negativity is far worse than the physical pain that we've gone through. Jesus says, I want you to begin to understand that what Jesus and Mary and now what Luis has done is to make us ready for this kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. He says, your long years of of suffering in bed, your pains, your sacrifices shall shine like sun's rays, like diamonds, like precious stones of infinite value. And little by little, those souls who will have the great good of reading, studying, and putting into practice the truths in the book of heaven, of knowing my divine will, 
and living in my divine will shall recognize even more. They shall know that the foundations be jeweled, the factories raised, the factories cemented with the many sacrifices of Louisa, the one to whom the mission of making known the kingdom of my divine will was entrusted. The mission that the saints, the, the, the apostles were entrusted was the, was the kingdom of redemption. And that's what we've had for 2,000 years, the kingdom of redemption. And, and the, the martyrdoms of those men and women. Well, Louisa was martyred every day. She, 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 Louisa would say to Jesus, why, are, why am I suffering? Why do, you, why do I die every day and you restore me back to life? Why, why don't I just go to heaven if you're, if you're done with me? And Jesus said, you don't understand, Louisa. I'd love to see you being reborn. See, this reborn isn't a one thing. It's daily. Every day, it's a new and divine way of holiness that's coming. A new and beautiful understanding of this book of heaven, of the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. He says, he says, everything that was entrusted to you, Louisa, is going to be known. Everything shall be known. In clear notes of those who have contributed, those who have directed you, those who have commanded you to write, those who have commanded us to read, who have directed you, who have commanded you to read and write, and have interested themselves with making known with words or with writings which regards my divine fiat. The greatest gift that Jesus says that I give to the world at this time is the divine fiat. And this is nothing. All the good that those shall possess, they shall possess the kingdom of my fight, divine fiat, what they shall do, the glory that they shall give to God, that it shall descend and des descend from heaven and ascend back to heaven into the ones who have been given the origin, the cause of a good so great. That's Louisa, that's St. Anna de Francia. And even if you are in heaven, the communicative virtues of my divine will that has lived life in you, Louisa, on earth shall be placed you, Louisa, in communication with us and shall keep all the ways open between you, Louisa, and the little children of the holy divine will. You have to understand this is, this is a glorious time to be alive. The whole por portion of the Immaculate Conception, which was yesterday, and if you, if you missed the hour of grace, do it today. Pray that hour of grace that Our Lady of Rosa Mystica said, such great blessings are given. The, the whole portion of the Immaculate Conception was operated in my divine will. It did not make another human seed, nor to destroy it, but it purified it. And with its heat and with its light removed from it, all the humors that this seed had contracted from the sin of Adam, it restored Our Lady, in Our Lady, the human seed, just as it had come out of our creative hand. Women don't have seed. That's why when you go to Genesis 3.15, I put enmity between you, Lucifer, and your seed, and the woman and her seed, talking about Our Lady. And Jesus explains Our Lady so beautifully in this book of heaven. And just as it came out of our creative hands, therefore, as the little virgin was conceived, the kingdom of my divine will was conceived in the Blessed Mother, and in the human generations, because informing and giving surprise and graces to one creature, in her, we look at the whole human family as of the whole human family. And it's if it were one alone. And then, when, as the virgin was conceived in this seed, exempt from every stain, that was all work of the divine fiat. Its divine kingdom was conceived again within humanity because of the Blessed Mother. It's Jesus and Mary, always Jesus and Mary. Its divine kingdom was conceived again within humanity. And as it, as the immaculate little virgin was born, the right to be able to possess it was given back to humanity. Now, when I, Jesus, came to earth, he said in human flesh, I made use of the seed of the sovereign of heaven. And it, became, and it can be said that we work together to form again the kingdom of our divine, our divine will for the human generations. So there is nothing left but to know it. There's nothing left in order to possess it. And this is why I am, he uses God's name, 
manifesting what belongs to my kingdom and to my divine will so that humanity may cover its ways and follow our steps and take possession. So we'll be back in 15 minutes in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.